I didn't know this as a thing, but there's something called forest farming, where you have a piece of land, you plant trees on there for the timber industry. But as those trees are growing, you have this big plot of land that nothing is really happening with that big plot of land. So you can start cultivating things there under the canopy of the trees that you're growing. And you create a little microclimate because you're basically making a tent and the humidity is staying in that tent, in that canopy a little bit better. So they did some research on that. It, it was harder than they thought it was, but after two years, the lion's mane, just pieces of wood, really big, just chopped up trees, they started producing big lion's mane. Amazing. And I'm quite curious, this research seems like it's ended, but I'm quite curious to compare an outdoor grown lion's mane to an indoor grown lion's mane. You have a bit of UV light, you have more uh, extreme changes in temperature outdoors, you have uh, more extreme changes in humidity, you have bacteria, yeasts, and, and just things that are normally out in the air that pose a threat to our lion's mane. And, and the lion's mane has I... to fight that off then. Might I infuse a tiny little bit of ancient wisdom by also mentioning that all of these different factors, sunlight, water, trees, ground, wind, insects, diseases, these are all a natural part of life. Mm. These are all things that exist out in the world, which is living and active and not necessarily things that are going to be found inside of a lab. And if we just take a super basic and ancient wisdom inspired approach growing food outside just makes sense because outside has everything that we need we have water mm -hmm. we have sun we have the substrate the wood that actually feeds the nutrients to the mushroom and it makes sense that if you can grow it outside you're going to get good benefits mm -hmm. however it's also going to be a little bit wild just like nature and not as easy to control and it might take longer yes. and considerably more effort depending on the environment that you're trying to grow your mushrooms in. Absolutely, so that's hard. Uh, but if you're in the right climate, yeah, there there is maybe uh, some arguments to be made for growing lion's mane on a log, kind of how nature intended it to. Um, which I feel like if you work more closely together with nature, you usually get better results unless you really push it in a different way. Arinamax is not the fruiting body, it is the mycelium. And this is where things get a little bit complex. Uh, if you've been around the mushroom space for a long time, you will know about fruiting bodies versus mycelium on grain. There is a lot of research on mycelium and mycelium being really positive for lion's mane because the mycelium creates a, a completely different class of compounds called the arenosines. And the arenosines have a lot of research on them because the arenosines enhance nerve growth factor synthesis, NGF. And that underlies a lot of the benefits of lion's mane. So clearly a lot of people have been hyper-focused on the mycelium. And another reason why you might want to be hyper-focused on the mycelium is because you can basically skip the fruiting stage, which is putting it in a bag with substrate and cutting it and letting the fruit bodies form and harvesting them at the right time. For mycelium on grain, you basically take a grain like uh, brown rice, for example, to take a leaf out of host defenses book. If you look at the back of their label, you will see uh, myceliated brown rice on the back of the label. And that's because what they're doing is they take the culture, the, the spores, and maybe you can make some liquid culture out of those spores. And then you can take that liquid culture and you can put it on some grains. And then the mycelium will expand and it will munch on the nutrients that are in the grains and it will digest some of it and it will build some biomass. The thinking being that that biomass is highly beneficial and will contain the arenosines. Well, spoiler alert, it doesn't contain the arenosines. We, we have not found high levels of arenosines in any of these mycelium on grain products. And I'm not saying mycelium on grain products are 100% are bad. Uh, there might be some benefits to them, but there's just not a whole lot of research on them. And at the end of the day, what you're consuming is 
a bunch of brown rice with a tiny little coating of mycelium around the edge. Because if you've grown some mushrooms and you've ever made your own grain spawn and you take the grain spawn out and you, you shake it really hard in the bag, you'll see all of that white go away basically and then it just becomes normal grain again and then it builds itself back up. So there's not a whole lot of mycelium. It's, it's probably something like 90% the grain and maybe 10% of mycelium. So what if you want higher amounts of mycelium and what if you want that mycelium to actually produce arenosine A? then you have to do something called submerged cultivation. So, spoiler alert, the mycelium is not going to be growing on rice or grain in this case. Correct. It's going to be growing in... A broth. And for this, of course, you need a whole lot of science, and this is going very far away from nature. So we can do something really unique here with a lot of human intervention, but that also makes it really hard. So... <clears throat> What we do, what our partners do, we're not... I've done this myself, actually, uh, in our little mushroom lab that we had at home. Uh, that's where we got some of our first arenosine A from, actually, in the lab. I, I made some liquid culture at home and then brought it to the lab and they extracted it. And there was tiny little amounts in it, so I got a little bit. But it's quite hard because you basically have to expand, expand, expand. So you take the, the spores of the lion's mane you culture them out on something like an agar dish, a, a petri dish, with agar agar in it. It's kind of a, a jelly-like substance from seaweed, and it becomes solid, and in that solid, it kind of becomes like a big gummy, almost. And in that big gummy, you can put some nutrients, and then the spores can grow on there. And then you can take the, the mycelium that's growing on that agar dish and... So then you take the mycelium that's on that agar dish and you can transfer it to a broth solution that has sugars in it, a nitrogen source in it, various different types of minerals adjusted to a proper pH. It's quite a complex formula. And then you culture that for a short amount of time and then you take that and you transfer it to a larger volume of that liquid culture broth. And then you culture that up. And then you take that and you put it in an even bigger volume. So you kind of just scale it up. And every time you scale it up, that reaction goes a bit faster and a bit faster and a bit faster, which seems to be important because you need to do it very quickly. So you need to create a lot of biomass, a lot of biomass that's very happy, has the nutrients it has, so that the biosynthetic machinery within that biomass, within that mycelium, can produce a renosine A. We pulled that off. In here, we have half a percent of arenosine A. It's on the back of the label here. Um, but we're going to bump it up pretty soon to 1% because we've tweaked the process a little bit together with the partner and, and they figured out a way in which to produce a little bit more arenosine A. But that's quite a unique process. It has very little to do with that, that natural process. It's, it's basically as far away from nature as you can get. Uh, no one in history ever really took arenosine A before Arenimax was on the market a couple of years ago. And now a ton of people have had significant doses of arenosine A in their system, which is interesting. But of course, in scientific research, people have been dosed with arenosine A enriched mycelium. It's, it's been there in the, the scientific world. It just hasn't been there in the commercial world. All of the different uh, lion's mane mycelium products that we tested didn't contain significant amounts of arenosine A. Half a percent still doesn't seem like a whole lot, and we are hoping to, to make it better. But half a percent is already hundreds of times higher than what we see in other mycelium products. So this actually contains arenosine A. It also contains things like arenosine S, arenosine E, arenosine C. We just don't have the reference standards for that yet. So hopefully in the future we will have those, we can test for them, and then yeah, the picture changes. It's going to be a lot more than just half a percent of arenosine A. But we really like this. We've been taking it now. Well, this is a... 120 count bottle. We're almost done. So for the two of us, we've almost been on this for a month. 